Good evening, Charlene. Don't. How y'all doing? Trying to see it myself. Come on, come on. Yes, sir. Good sister is here. Charlene is here. Felicia is here. How y'all doing? Come on in the room. What time is it? All right. <laughs> Holy Ghost feel. I ain't gonna be able to do all of this. I ain't gonna wait on grandmama. Well, I gotta wait on grandmama. Pastor Alberta. Put your seatbelt on. Put your seatbelt on. I need all my prayer warriors to just start praying right now. <laughs> Stuff I'm getting ready to talk about, just get to praying. <laughs> I didn't start this fight, but it's on. Grandma, there she is. Come on, Grandma. That's all I wanted to hear was Grandma. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Uh, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I am Stephen Williams. They call me the Good Bishop. I'm the Senior Pastor of Goodwill Baptist Church uh, and uh, Mount Zion Outreach Center. We are a real outreach center. Amen. Over in Thomasville, we'll call ourselves the Haven. It's a place where you can come and learn to be and uh, get to know yourself in Jesus' name and not let nobody steal you, left hook you. Amen. So we're going to do that same thing over here at Goodwill where the, his people, I hadn't said this in a long time, where his people and his presence really is the priority and not your attitudes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord have mercy. All right. Uh, and really not what you think. His people and his priority is uh, his people and his presence really is the priority and all the other stuff. Uh, if you have no presence, then you are missing it over here at Goodwill Baptist Church. Amen. Because you can have performance, but no presence, which means you have not made God a priority. All right. That's my introduction to all of you, God's people. I welcome you across the world as I begin my diatribe today. I'm going to pray. We ain't even going to get to all that stuff. Join us. Look on there at the bottom of the screen. You'll see you can join us where you need to join us. Get your Bibles out, though, so that we can travel a little bit. We're going to travel a lot of places tonight. Father, we love you. We thank you. We give you praise and glory and honor. We thank you right now, Lord, my, my ears, my, my eyes, my mouth, my heart, my mind, all of it, my hands, everything about it, Lord. Uh, keep me, Lord, in in oneness with the beat of this body. Hallelujah. And Lord, make certain that I can articulate, Lord, with clarity of thought and speech, the things that you would have me to say today. And God, uh, do not let not one person, not one person get bored, not one person get mesmerized or overwhelmed tonight uh, for the things that we are discussing out of the Bible. And Lord, send your glory, which makes preaching easy. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. I pray to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that uh, you are good ground today, that you have uh, figured out a way how to get yourself ready uh, for uh, what God is saying tonight. And I ain't making nobody. Don't get nervous. Don't get nervous. Uh, I'm showing out already, I know, but it, it is something that I want to to go. I'm actually going to start with my last, um, 
my last scripture is going to be my actual first scripture and hopefully I'll be able to get back to my last scripture. Uh, you're going to have to get a pen and a piece of paper, all right, because you're going to have to actually go back and uh, read these things. You may not be able to read them all. You may not be able to catch them all, uh, but please get you a, a piece of, uh, a, go and get you a pen and a piece of paper or better yet, come back and let's explore this together. And I'm going to be as concise as I possibly can tonight with the, with the text um, because there's just so much chatter that is going on in the body of Christ right now. There is a, a lot of chatter. And as, as, a, as a good pastor, I need to bring um, us back into focus, if you will. And I just want to make sure that you have this. It's not a, uh, it's not a fussing message. This is a uh, illuminating message tonight. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter number 42. You got it? Isaiah 42, verses 5 through 9. Isaiah 42, verses 5 through 9 is what I'm going to read. All right? Verses, uh, Isaiah 42, verses 5 through 9. And I want you to see this. I want to read this. This is in King James Version, and this is where we're going to start. It says, Thus saith God the Lord, I'm in verse number 5, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles to open the blind eyes to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord that in my name and my glory will I not give to another neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. I want you to see, and I recognize that Isaiah 42 is alluding to Jesus Christ. I, I get it. But when Jesus then leaves on the scene, he leaves us to be the ones where God will call thee. He said, I have called thee in righteousness, God himself, and I will hold thy hand. God is going to hold thy hand. He will keep us. He's going to keep us. He will give thee for a covenant of the people, right? A covenant of the people for a light of the Gentiles. That's what we are. These are, We are covenant of the people and a light of the Gentiles. What are we supposed to do? To open the blind eyes, to bring out, of, out the prisoners from the prison, the prison of the walls and the prison of their mind. And them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Y'all with me? I am the Lord that in my name, and my glory will I give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things I do declare. And he says, before they spring up, I'm telling you right now on July 6th, in Jesus' name. All right? Tonight, I really want to go back up, and I want to talk now from the thought. Uh, this thought tonight is just going to be really good for us. I'm glad you're watching. Get your pencil and your paper out. I want to talk from the thought, the great deception. That's my topic tonight, the great deception. I don't know if I spelled it right, but that's what I'm doing, the great deception. There is a deception that is going on in the land, and God has given us out of uh, 
Isaiah 42. God has made it so that we are the light. He has called us. God bless you, Bishop. He has called us into righteousness. He has called us by his righteousness. And so there is this huge deception that is happening in the body of Christ where um, if you all will just simply take a poll, and I was sharing this with my sister, uh, where everything is a go. Everything is okay. Everything. Everything that's got anything to do with the opposite of God is okay right now. Um I mean, when I tell you uh, the, the last straw was, you know, now there's an assault. There is somewhat of a, con not, 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 there is somewhat of, it is brought about a conversation by Dr. Dollar as it pertains to money uh, and the tithe. And I don't want to get into that subject matter tonight. What I'm, what I'm saying is, is that there is a great deception that is going on. And so, even though you are going to, you know, his, 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 um, his information is that, is that you must give from the heart. But like, if you give 5%, it can't be a tithe because the word tithe actually means 10th, but I'm not here to discuss him. I'm here to discuss what else is happening. This is, uh, um, this is, these are things that are happening around us that is diluting what God and how God has called us. Let's, let's deal with it. All right, let's go to work. So Genesis chapter number three, let's start there. Genesis chapter number three. And I just want you to see this Genesis chapter number three is the beginning of this. And I want to read verses one through seven. You all stay with me. All right. It says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord hath made. And he said unto the woman, yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the, the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. The serpent saith unto the woman, Ye shall not die. Here it is. The, the, the serpent actually says to uh, Eve, in, in, in direct conflict she says that the word is that you can't eat it and then she added something that says you can't touch it that is not what Adam um, the Lord said you shouldn't eat of it lest ye die so what the serpent then says to the woman is just directly he says nah not gonna happen you will not die for God and then he gives an he gives a uh, the reasoning behind why you won't die. And so he says to her, for God knoweth that in the day that you eat that of, that your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as God knowing good of evil. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant for the eyes and the tree was to be desired to make one wise. And she took upon the tree and did eat and gave it to her husband and he did eat. All right. And so here is the great, the, 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 the measuring stick is that what the enemy utilizes across the board is the moment that God says one thing, his MO is to refute what God said directly. And so the body of Christ is in a conundrum right now because Everything that Jesus said or God said or the Bible says is what you should do. We are now getting a direct message to say, no, you don't have to do that. She clearly was instructed through Adam that you should not eat of the fruit, that you should not uh, eat of the fruit. She added not touch or you shall surely die. He goes directly, not, not that you shouldn't eat it, not that you shouldn't touch it. What he says is, is that you will not die. Thus begin, that is the MO of what he does to bring about this whole notion of deception. Um, he uses this in, in, in a very, very, very poignant way. 
And what is happening is that in the body of Christ, everything now right is being called wrong. Wrong is being okayed as right. And so there is this intertwining, if you will, and it is the the it is the 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 method by which uh, uh, it will be utilized to deceive us. It is called a deception. And so there's a lot going on. So let's get into it. And so uh, it, it is so funny that when we go now to um, what's happening now is, is that there is not a recognition, if you will, when people are out of order. Hmm. Because we're living in this whole notion of the grace dispensation. Right. So grace covers. Grace covers. God's grace covers his grace covers. So whether I uh, I worship and then I wobble, he he covers. If I dance before the Lord and then I go to the club, he covers. If I uh, if I lay up and 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 um, uh, have relationships outside of a covenant he covers uh, i can both speak in tongues and cuss at the same time i can actually speak in tongues and curse at the same time and yet grace covers um there is a dilution and so people now don't want to come to the assembly of, of their their they don't want to assemble themselves anymore right and now, because of the COVID mechanism, uh, there's a me there's a uh, there are things where we're not gathering. Have you noticed now, dancing before the Lord as we used to know it? Now it's just an emotional roller coaster. So people now don't want to dance. Uh, people would love to worship. They love to 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 feel His presence. But have you noticed that that particular movement of the presence only lasts? In the moment that it is there, it is not a carryover where it is an, an, an everyday moment of worship. Y'all stay with me. And so repositioning now has become a thing of the past that when you notice that you are out of position, you reposition. Go with me to Psalms 51 and 1 through 12. And so you know this, you know this particular psalm very well. And this becomes a, a crucial, crucial point. Because David himself, he says, Lord, have mercy on me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. In other words, he knew that he had transgressed. There was a transgression. There was something that triggered him that said, oh, my God, I'm out of position. Uh, and so he, he says, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me. This is after Bathsheba from my sin. Listen to what he says. For I acknowledge my what? Transgressions. And, and, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thy, when thy judges. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity. And he goes into it in the sin was my mother conceived. So he jumps down to verse number seven. He says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness and the bones and uh, uh, hide my face from my sin and blot out all my iniquities. Create within me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit uh, from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. I want to stop there. Um, and what is happening is, is that there is an un, there is an inability to recognize when we are out of position. So Eve's challenge was she got a commandment from the Lord. She received a word from the Lord, right? But did not recognize she was no longer in position. David then is his 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 posture has been brought to him an awareness that he is not in the right place. And so he says to God, what I need you to do is 
reposition me, purge me, cling me, create within me a clean heart. There is a great deception going on in the land where the people of God cannot recognize that they are out of position. And so when you can't see that you're out of position, you cannot ask God to reposition you. Everything now is becoming easy. In fact, there is very little conviction in the hearts of people as it pertains to transgression. There is a thing where people cannot even recognize when there is a transgression. And so if you can't recognize that you're out of position, you can't ask God to reposition you because all things now are becoming common. We are all becoming common into the point where it is becoming almost acceptable in every area because we do not like the pushback that we get. So we are now conforming, if you if you will, we're conforming to the methods of our society. I don't know if people even, I don't know if we as a people recognize being out of position. Do you all, and, and, and I say this, I say this as if y'all sitting in this room with me, but have you noticed, have you noticed that there is a combination or a combining um, that everybody is saved? It does not matter what you do. Everybody gives presence. Everybody gives praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Everybody, right? Everybody. Y'all looking at me. I know you're looking at me and you're laughing, but the, the same ones, right, that wins awards, that uh, use uh, horrible names for, for this and they promote whatever they promote, these are the same ones that give praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to thank God for this, da 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 and the same ones because we excuse their success from their relationship, their visibility, right? So we have people who are very successful who are cussers, smokers, drinkers, partiers, clubbers, right? Come on, y'all. And we, we love it. We, we, love, we, we, we listen to them. We embrace them. We, we enjoy them. Now, what is happening is, is that we all now, are becoming in the proper, all of us are being categorized in the same way to the point where we are not recognizing what position we are in. So when you don't know that you're out of position, it's hard to ask God to reposition you. It's, it is hard now, and, and I'm, 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 I'm coming, I'm coming just me. I'm, I'm coming as a person because now it is getting so diluted that I, I, the, the blatant sins are really, really visible, right? But what about that believer that does not even pray, that don't even read their scripture, that don't even exercise or walk according to the text? or walk according to the word, right? They know how to dance. They know how to speak in tongues. But life has them on a, on a cyclical thing where they're not even speaking the word of God. How many of your friends really speak the word of God when y'all talk? Most of us do not have friends that can constantly quote the text or revert revert back to the word of God when we are having conversations. Now, most of my friends do because... I end up, after I finish laughing, we start talking about something that's got something to do with the text. <laughs> but most people that we're having a conversation with, uh, just take a poll. How many of them go back to the conversation of the word of God, right? And so if we are the illumination of the word of God, isn't it funny that we no longer discuss what we are the illumination of? So it is hard to know if I'm out of position. It's hard to, to understand. It's hard to ask for repositioning 
because I don't realize that I'm out of position. I really feel like life has me on a regular roller coaster. So I'm good with what I'm doing. And I don't even know to ask God to create a clean heart because all things now are being considered equal. All things are being considered equal. And there is absolutely, and we were talking about this earlier as we were talking about tithing and, and the conversation has, 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 has broadened itself. Have you recognized that God, there is no punishment now if you don't obey God? Have you noticed everything that you do, as long as your heart is, is pure, <laughs> that God sends a blessing, that there is absolutely no repercussion, none. So when we do stuff and we say, well, the Lord knows my heart. But yes, he does. And and I'm grateful for living in grace because he was he was black and white back in the Old Testament days. And, and, I, and I love grace. I do. And, and, and he knew I couldn't live back then. Uh, I'd be dead. Most of us aren't, that's on this line would be dead because we're not able. We're not we don't live 100 percent out of obedience to him. But what's happening is it is becoming fewer again. I can only tell you, if you don't know you're out of position, you can't ask God to reposition you. And the great deception that Eve had was, once he told her that taking of the fruit, she wouldn't die. She didn't realize that the moment she touched it, she was out of position. She didn't even know. She didn't even recognize that she was no longer... In fact, I didn't even finish reading the text because they didn't recognize, they did not recognize they were off until they rec until they saw they were naked. They did not realize they were out of position until they saw, wait a minute, that they were naked. And here is the caveat, that they were naked and ashamed because they had always been naked but they had never been ashamed. It was on, and she didn't, rec they did not recognize that they were out of position until shame hit them, right? So the moment, because they were already naked, they had been that way, but shame came. And what is missing in 2021? or 2022, what's missing? Shame. <laughs> Nobody's ashamed anymore. They don't realize that they're out of position. All things are okay. Everything is okay. <laughs> Go with me to Proverbs chapter number, Proverbs 15. Let's go to Proverbs 15. I wanna show you this out of Proverbs 15. And this is really what started this whole conversation today. Proverbs 15, 28 through 33 is what I'm going to read. 28 through 33. And then we're going to go to Proverbs 16. And I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it in your hearing. So he says in, in, in Proverbs, Proverb, Proverbs 15 and 28, it says, The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. The Lord is far from the wicked. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, and a good report maketh the bone fat, the bones fat. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. So I want to rep, make a reference that the when, when God says this, that the Lord is far from the what? The wicked. But he heareth the prayer of the what? Righteous. Here is a delineation that there are two types of people. And I know we don't want to be recognized as wicked. We all 
want to be diagnosed as righteous. Everybody is right. Have you noticed? Everybody is righteous. <clears throat> Everybody has a right. Man, I, my heart is right. My mind is right. My attitude is right. I know I mess up sometimes. I do. I get it wrong sometimes. But my heart is right. Right. So we have be, we have joined the vernacular. We've jo man, I made a mistake, but God knows he knows my heart. He knows my heart. Not recognizing that the moment we utilize that as an excuse, we no longer realize we're out of position. Our thought process is I'm I'm cool with what I do because grace covers me. Grace has me. And so we don't even realize that we are no longer living righteously. <laughs> Go with me to Proverbs 16, 1 through 10. The preparations of the heart of man, the, the preparations of the heart in man, and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. In, in other words, whatever comes up from the heart of man and the answer of the tongue, it really is a uh, it, it is a, it is thing that is moved by God. It, that's what it said is, is that's the way God made us. All right. That's what that means. Listen to this. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. <laughs> but the Lord weighs the what? The spirits. So what has happened to us is in our own eyes, whatever it is that we are doing, we are weighing them as right. And a lot of people are missing the bail on the inside to say, ooh, I'm out of place. So, something is off. And it's getting to the point now where the body of Christ is having a problem discerning when they are off. Because in their eyes, I'm good. All right, here, here is an example. Ooh, yeah, man, she got on my nerve. So I cussed her out. You know, I was frustrated, man. I, man, I was having a bad day. I was, man, this, man, I just had to take a little something. I had to go somewhere and get myself together. I had to get me a little sip. I had to get me, man, I'm so sick and tired of not having any fun. Man, I gotta go, I, I gotta go get my groove on. I got to go get, I'm so tired of waiting. I got to go satisfy this flesh. I, man, I'm, look, my, I, I, I'm tired of dealing with people. I, I'm sick of the saints. So instead of dealing with the saints, I'm cutting them off. I ain't got nothing to do with nobody. I'm just, I, ain't, ain't nobody right. Now I'm tired of people doing this and I'm sick of it. I'm going to close off everything. So now instead of the scripture saying reconcile when thy brother has offended you, leaving your gift at the altar and go to your brother. See, we no longer do that now. Now it is acceptable for you to close off and shut off. Why? Because in your own eyes, that is the right thing to do because you've been offended. But we don't, we don't, we, we haven't heard uh, bless those that despitefully use you. See, we see we had we don't want to revert back to that. Love those that 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 that, that talk about you. Them that scandalize your name. No, what we done is what's right in my eyes. What feels right to my flesh. I'm going to do that. And God is saying, yes, it feels good in your eyeballs, but you are being deceived. I am weighing your spirit. You act just like everybody else, but I'm the God that you remember y'all do it. Y'all do this all the time. They ain't got nothing on me. Can't nobody judge what I do. You don't know my relationship. You don't know what's happening with me. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm sick of it. Tired of it. I'm, I'm through. Through with the church. How many people are through with the church? How many people literally are finished with the church? I understand you can be sick of religion, but you cannot get sick of the church. Why? Because the church is the only place where the gates of hell cannot prevail. It is not you. It is the church. You, if you lose the church, then you lose, you lose the protection 
that the enemy can prevail. Now, let's take it a, a step further. Who do you think the church is? You think you are the only one that's the church? No, he put people in the church. There are people in the church, the same church people, the same church that you don't want to have anything to deal with. And I could see it if you were going to leave the people from within the building and go to the people outside of the building, but you ain't dealing with the people outside of the building and you're not dealing with the people on the inside of the building. Whose people do you think we all are? We belong to the Lord. And so now you are, we have been deceived as a, there's a delusion. Have you ever heard the scripture? Pray for your enemy. Have you ever read that one? You ain't never read that. You ain't never read that because we dog our enemies. We, oh, we ain't got nothing to do with that. We, we, the, thus said the Bible, cut off anybody who offends you. Cut off people who hurt your feelings. What about all the people who you hurt? What about all the things you've done? And uh, you, I, you, I need understanding on that part. No, no, no. What? See, it's easy to be a hearer. It is hard to be a doer. When you do not know you're out of position, you can't ask God to reposition you. So we now have conformed into the world where all of us, where all of y'all, all of y'all cuss, and all of you drink, and all of you smoke. Everybody smoke a little bit to relax. And this is what's happening with the generation. I can go worship on Saturday night, but I can go to the club on Sunday night. But I got both. I got Jesus, but I got to go over here and I got to get my groove thing. I, I mean, I'm just, it's everywhere. We all over the place. I give when I want to give. I give what I want to give. Now, we when we go back to the tithes, listen to what he says. He said, when have you robbed me in tithes and in what? Y'all go ahead, quote it, go, go ahead, say it with your mouth, say it with your chest out, offerings. So now you don't even realize because you're struggling with the 10th, you are still robbing him in the offering. What, <laughs> what is it that he's asking you to give? And so there is this great deception that people are trying to get you around. Let me read on. I don't even know where I start. Let me read on. He says, uh, in he says, all the ways of the man are clean in his eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirit. Listen to what he says. Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. How many of us have been committing our works to the Lord so that our thoughts are established? See, it's hard. It is difficult because the rational mind or the mind of the of the body of Christ right now is saying, no, I got to do, I got to make it. I got to do this thing. I got to make this happen. And we have not committed the ways. So it has skewed our thoughts and we don't even realize we're out of position. Listen, the Lord has made all things for himself. Yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. He said, I even made wickedness for the day of evil. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be un, un what? He shall not be what? He shall not be uh, what? Uh, oh, oh, no, 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 no. Grace does not afford us to be punished. There is no punishment associated with the grace dispensation. Now, I realize I am in Old Testament. So let me bounce. Let me jump down to verse number 18 because I don't want y'all. Pride, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. Better is to be an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. And so I'm all in Old Testament. And so I want to jump over to Hebrew. Hebrews, which is New Testament. That's over there in the New Testament. That's over there. Because I want to tell you, we are being tricked. We, there is a great deception going on. Check out Hebrews chapter number four. He says, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. First of all, he said, let us what? fear let us have respect for it there is some there is, there are places saints that we can actually miss god can i can i can i tell y'all there there are places in this relationship with god where you actually can miss god nobody wants to teach us this grace covers all the the I, and again i am grateful to be up under grace. Thank you, Jesus. 
just for the mere fault of some of the things that I, I think about, sometimes when I laugh, when I shouldn't be laughing, and I know I'm laughing, but I, anybody who's ever laughed with me, and you know I'd be laughing, I'd be going off the deep end, I do ask the Lord, Lord, please don't kill me. Please, Jesus. I do. I do. I talk because I know if it was his old days, I, I'd be gone. So I be I be messing with grace a little bit when I be picking and stuff like that. But there is a punishment that is associated when we come short. All right. You can come short of his rest for unto us was the gospel preached. Verse two, as well as unto them. But the word preached. Listen to this. The word what preached did the word what preached the word preached the act of the audience of which you are wanting someone to hear the act of hearing to hear the word preached the word preached i'm going off of this because there is this whole notion now that i don't even want to hear preaching i do not want to hear preaching preaching is too much do you realize i was told some time ago that somebody didn't realize that I was passionate about my preaching and I really should be more of a teacher and I should not be preachy. I should just teach the word of God and allow people to discern or get it for themselves and I shouldn't be preaching. But listen, I'm just showing you what he says. He says, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed, what? With faith in them that did what? Heard it. What am I saying? That the word does not, or that there is a place that you can be hearing the word, but if there is no faith attached to it, if it's not mixed, you really are not hearing the word, which means you don't know you're out of position, which means you cannot ask God to reposition you because faith is not being mixed with it. The word said it did not profit them. It did not work. There are a lot of people who are going over the text and the word of God is not working because it is absent of faith because people do not want to believe in faith. We want to believe what we see and not the measure of faith. I got to come on for which we have be believed do enter into rest. Um, uh, as he had said, as I have sworn in my wrath, uh, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the work. All right. So what he's saying is there is a rest in him. There is a peace in him. There are so many believers boy, that are antsy. There are so many, be so many believers who have no rest. I, and I'm trying to figure out the reason you have no rest is not because you didn't come to church. You came to church and you had no faith mixed with what you heard. And it is not profiting you and you are reverting back to your old nature. You are being deceived. It is the spirit of deception. You shall not surely die. And I'm saying to you that the word preached with no faith will not profit you. Let me jump down to verse number 14, uh, as I have written in my notes, 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our what? Profession. Let us hold fast. Let us hold on to our profession, our confession. For we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace uh, to help in time of need. If you don't have a holding on of your profession, y'all with me? What is the profession that Jesus can and will help you? That there really is a right and a wrong. There is a righteous and there is a wicked. There, remember we talked about you know, there is a wicked and there is a righteous. There is a sin. There is a, a, a non-sin. There are some things that we cannot do, we should not do. But when we do those things, 
we are missing being able to come to the throne of grace where we may find our help. Go with me to Hebrews chapter number two, Hebrews chapter number two, just turn back over for a couple. Of, and it says one through three, he says, therefore, we ought to give the most earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them what slip. You cannot let what you heard slip. He, are y'all, y'all hearing this? It says, therefore, we ought to give the most earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip, which means what you heard, you can slip and not even hear what you heard. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Y'all want me to say it another way. If it can slip away from you, it means you can lose what you heard right it says lest at any time we should let them slip which means if it slips then that means you don't have a tight grip on what you heard and if you don't have a tight grip on what you heard and if it's not mixed with faith then the word that is preached to you is no longer profiting. Now, if you had a word and it has slipped out of you, do you still have that word? Hmm. Let me give you an example. If you had a book in your hand and it slipped out your hand, do you still have the book in your hand? You don't have the book in your hand anymore. <laughs> Let some money slip out your hand. You don't have the money anymore. The same concept applies to the word of God. Listen to this. He says, for if the word spoken by angels were steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a, a just recompense of reward. In other words, the transgression and the disobedience actually has an, a reward attached to it. So while we are in this grace dispensation, have you noticed Nothing is a transgression. Nothing is a disobedience. Why? Because grace covers me when I mess up. This is a thought process. People have forgotten that a transgression and a disobedience has a reward. So we're being deceived into thinking that we can blend in. And he says, if it happened to the angels and they got a reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. So in other words, you can lose your position. Grace doesn't cover you to put you back in position if you are constantly living in transgression and disobedience. You can't cover every, we cannot cover everything under the umbrella of grace because there is a transition, there is a transgression and there is a disobedience. Now you're going to say, who has the right to tell me what's a transgression and what's a disobedience? The same book that you have to read is the same book I have to read. We are discovering the word of God wherever, where we can. And when we start walking in transgression and we start walking in disobedience, what's happening in our generation is, yeah, so, and let's, let's use this, Let, let's use this as an example. Why does the man, why does the, the young man just kill everybody? Why, why does he kill everybody? You know, I mean, I mean this, this is a general thing, you know, and, and he was like, yeah, I, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Maybe because he feels like there, the transgression and the disobedience really doesn't carry a reward. I mean, it doesn't, it ain't going to do nothing. What they going to do? <laughs> Most people do not believe that if you shoot, you'll get shot back. Most people don't believe that if you, 
if you use the N word on black people, that black people might slap you. That, that if you walk up on somebody, somebody might do something. There is a repercussion. There is a transgression because of the disobedience. There is a reward for it. And the body of Christ, we are blending in in such a way that we don't even notice that we are out of position and being out of position limits God's ability. God Almighty, I'm getting ready to say something that just blessed my heart. It limits God's ability to allow the blessing to overtake you. The blessing overtaking you is positionally. If you are in the right position, blessings overtake you. If you are out of position, you miss the blessing. I got one for you. I don't know why I keep going back to this time though. I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a what? Blessing. All right? So what happens if you're not under the window? What happens if you are out of position and not under the window? I will open up a window, which means, and the blessing must be poured out the window, right? So what if you're not up under the window? You're in the church, but you're out of position because you do not want to live a life. You don't think that what you're doing has a reward associated with it. All right, let me get out of here. So how, if the angels can't escape, what make us think we can escape? Let me move on. I got to go. Hebrews chapter number 10. Let's go to Hebrews chapter number 10 very quickly. Hebrews chapter number 10. My time, my time is running out. I hope y'all getting something out of this. Hebrews chapter. So if you are not in position, yeah. If, if you are not in position to receive, you will not. If you are not in position to receive, you can't, Canon. You can't receive if you're out of position. Okay, so let, let's take that to your children. And you say, meet me at the corner. Uh, you're in college. Meet me at the corner uh, of, 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 of Bryan Boulevard and, and whatever, whatever that corner is. You meet me right there, and I got this extra money for you. But you never come to meet me. You are out of position. I can't leave it there because somebody else will get it. It's not meant for everybody. It's actually meant for you. But because you were out of place, uh, because you were not in the right place. Have I, y'all ain't never been to college and somebody said they would come to visit you and then they couldn't find you, especially in our day and age when we didn't have no cell phone and somebody had to tell somebody, they down here, they down here, they down. you out of position. And once you get out of position, you, if you're not careful, people will leave. People will leave with your blessing in their pocket and be like, I'll send it later on. That's why when somebody tell me they're getting ready to bless me, I try to make my way to the position. Why? I want to be in the proper place at the proper time. I don't think this generation believes that you can miss your miracle, that you can actually be out of place with God. Nobody's questioning your salvation. Nobody's questioning whether or not you know God. The question on the floor is, are you in the right position? Or have you conformed to the way that this world is operating? And you think God is just supposed to find you. I'm here to tell you, saints, that ain't how that work. <laughs> that got real country. Hebrews 10. Hope y'all getting something. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, I'm in verse number 16 of Hebrews 10. This is the covenant that I would make with them after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their what? Hearts. And in their minds will I what? Write them. So that means now the laws of God is not just in black and white. The laws of God are in your heart and in your mind. Now, if your heart and your mind is jacked up and corrupted, then where are the laws? Hmm. If your mind can't contain the laws, then how can you regurgitate the laws? If it's not in your heart, how can you speak it? If hatred and evil and yesterday is in your heart, 
then what's operating in your heart? It can't be the laws of God. It can't be. If you are living in your yesterday, you cannot be operating in God's right now. How does the law work in your heart and mind? Are you liked? Do you want to be liked? Do you want to satisfy the flesh and the spirit? Because I think we're at a point now where we want to do both. We want to live in both arenas. And that's what's happening in the body of Christ. Christians are living in both arenas. And we, we think living in both arenas is unpunishable. <laughs> I'm just telling you, transgression and disobedience has a reward. Ask the angels who are stuck down here and can't get back to heaven. And if they if it happened to them, how you think you're going to escape? Listen to this. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice of sin forever, sat down on the right hand. Where am I? Um, in verse 15. All right, all right. Let me jump on down to 15. Uh, da, 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 da. Having therefore, brethren, I'm in verse number 19. Listen, uh, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh. So he made a new way for us to get to the consecrated place, which was through the veil and having an high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of what? Faith. True heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from the evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without what wavering, wavering for he is faithful that promise now let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering so now are you if you are wavering because he's only faithful that he promised for those who don't waver but if you are wavering hmm, and you're not holding fast the profession of our faith without wavering, then you forfeit his faithfulness. God, I feel like running Jesus Christ. If you forfeit your positioning of your faith in him, you forfeit his faithfulness. Oh no, his grace is sufficient. No, what's happening is we're having to depend on somebody else's faithfulness to get us out of situations. I feel like running. I feel like running. We call other people for prayer because <clears throat> we forget the veil was for us too. And you have a right to talk in the veil just like I have a right to talk. But because you won't hold fast to the faithfulness, you have to call somebody to help you get behind that veil. <laughs> but if you were holding your faith, you wouldn't need anybody. You could call on him and he would answer you. Why? Because he's faithful. Let us consider one another to provoke to love. Is that my final? Let me move on. Let me get out of Hebrews chapter number 10. Let me, let me, let me go to Hebrews chapter number 12. I'm in the New Testament, ain't it? Am I throwing off? Am I throwing off yet? I be throwing off, but I be teaching good. I be teaching the truth. Hebrews chapter number 12, verse 25 through 29. I'm just talking about how we have been, we are being deceived. We're, be, we're walking in deception. 25 through 29. See then you refuse not him that speaketh. For if we escape not who refuse him that speak on earth, much more shall we not escape. If we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Now if you turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, you, you shall not escape. <clears throat> Whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. In, in other words, God 
becomes unmovable. God is not move. You can't move him. You can't. He, he, he'll do exactly what he said he will do. Go with me to Hebrews chapter number 13. Just flip right over. Hebrews 13, 3 through 6. Hebrews 13. Remember then that are uh, in bonds and bound with them and them which suffer adversity as being yourselves as in the body. Marriage is honorable in all things. I like that. And the bed undefiled. I like that. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. We are so busy trying to judge whoremongers and, and adulterers that we are in God's business. That ain't what I want to talk about. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Let your conversation be without covetousness. What does that mean? Let your conversation be without ne of needy of filthy lucre. <laughs> and be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake ye. And so what he's saying is, remove the, the spirit of covetousness because God says, I won't leave you. But if you add the spirit of covetousness in your conversation of filthy luger, then you have removed God from being your help. And so there is a count. There is a, there is a movement here and people are struggling. And I know my time is almost up. I know I'm laborious tonight, but there is a great deception verse number eight says the jesus christ the same yesterday today and forevermore uh, verse number six so that we may boldly say the lord is my helper and i will will not fear what man shall say unto me so what's happening is if you're going to do it with covenants if you're going to be manipulative about your money then you then you then you forfeit your helper i need my helper i don't need my conversation uh to be filled with covetousness, always talking about what I need. He knows what I have need of even before I ask. He is my helper. We are being deceived. There is a great deception going on in the body of Christ. If you are his child, he he said, I'll never leave you, neither will I forsake you. That's what he said. He said he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's what he said. He said he'll never walk away from you. So you don't have to have a manipulative spirit in order to get God to function. When you function in the manipulative spirit, you have now, con you have now conformed to this particular world. And I'm here to tell you, if you conform to this world, you forfeit the helper. If you conform to this way of the world, you forfeit the helper. And a lot of people want the grace of God and they want all the stuff that comes with the grace and they want to have all the spirit of manipulation, but they do not want to do it God's way. There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction. And what I'm trying to say in this whole notion of being together and trying to make, make it feel, look, we're being deceived. I'm closing. James chapter number one, y'all read it in your hearing. James chapter number one, James chapter number one says this. James chapter number one, uh, and basically he says, you're going to have to be a doer. Uh, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Which means if you're not doing the word and you're hearing the word, then you are walking in deception. And if you are walking in deception, then you're out of position. And if you're out of position, you don't and don't know to correct the position, then no wonder nothing is working out in your favor. Things should be working out in your favor even when things are not working out. Does that make sense? You should, <laughs> when, when you're going through your valley moment, God should be covering you in the valley moment. If your dependency is on him, it is only when we come out of ourselves and start trying to manipulate the situation. I can't read all of this. I'm going to read this last little verse right here, though, because I got to show you this. First Timothy chapter number four, first Timothy chapter number four. He says, now the spirit uh, ex uh, speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Saints, it's in here. People will depart from the faith. They are giving heed to seducing spirits. Listen, and they are giving heed to new doctrines. It can happen. It can happen. 
speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot sign, a hot iron. They forbidden to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving to them which believe and know the truth. You can't be forget uh, forbidden to marry. <laughs> Let everything be done in moderation. I don't know. If, I don't think that's in the Bible, but you can't talk. Y'all stop eating meat. That's not what he said. It's, it's, you're being, it, it, there's a, a great deception. You can fall away. Grace does not give us a fallback plan that we're going to always fall back into God. Grace doesn't do that. You and I can fall away. You can get it wrong if we live in unrighteousness. If we're going to operate in unrighteousness, you and I can live that way. Second Thessalonians chapter number two. I won't read all of it in chapter number 12. What I want you to know out of this is that unrighteousness really does exist. It says three to three through twelve, but unrighteousness really does exist. Everything you and I do, everything you do, can't be righteous, and everything can't be. God knows my heart, and everything can't be. Everything just can't be. Oh, He's going to cover it. You and I can miss the blessing. There is a falling away. He asked us in, he, in Ephesians chapter number four, put on the new man, take off the old man and put on the new man. Why does he say that? Because there is a new man that you're supposed to put on and an old man that's got to disappear. And what the enemy has us doing right now has us confused as to what God really is singing and we have become a hodgepodge if you will and so now there is a fight over whether or not saints can cuss have you noticed preachers are beginning to cuss a little bit more all right publicly uh, with no shame now have you noticed even preachers priests saints are starting to do club they are right with going to the club. Have you noticed that there are people uh, who are okay with um, just cutting people off, sending people to hell, <laughs> which you, you really don't. And then have you noticed that people are now just doing whatever they want to do and saying only God can judge me. I'm on IG and I see IG quite a bit, and I see a lot of women of God, and then I see their pictures, and I see their activities, and I see the things that they say, and I see the things that, that they speak of, and I'm beginning to question, why do you have women of God in your moniker? You know why? It's because all things are open right now. It doesn't matter. There is no restrictions. I'm here to tell the saints you can fall away. There has to be something, whether there is a transgression, disobedience, or obedience. I didn't even want to pull up the scripture, how shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? You know, that's in there. That was back in Romans chapter number six as I was looking at it. But if you're going to be a doer, if you're, if you're not going to be a doer of the word and not a hearer, and a hearer only, then how, why, and you still expect God to perform for you? Nothing is off limits now? I mean nothing. If you all just think about it and hear my heart, nothing is off limits, even for the saints. Everybody believes I can do what I do and God still loves me. God still loves, uh, with the exception, listen, I'm going to tell you, there ain't but three things with the exception. We don't like people who murder. We don't like people who abuse uh, children and women. We don't like that. But other than that, yeah, smoke a little weed, smoke a little, I mean, 
you know, snort a little coke and be a saint, you're going to make it in. Abuse, you, you know, young people, whether it's female or male, eh, you know, that's just that's just what's in there. And, and we just do not believe anymore that there is a punishment that's associated with our consequence, with our choices. That's the same thing that happened to Eve. He said to her, you will not surely die. And he's using the same concept. You are, right. grace is going to cover you. If grace is going to cover everything, then there's going to be a whole lot of people not living anything. And I'm here to say, if we get to live anything, then what exactly is a transgression? What exactly is a sin? If I'm going to follow my heart and be obedient to all, what God said, but I'm not going to follow the whole law or the whole rule or the whole principle, I'm just going to do part of it, but I'm expecting God to bless me completely from it. Saints, there can be a great falling away. I don't want to be that. I'm just here to let you know, people who don't pray don't have power. People who don't fast and pray, you don't have much to see faith. Mountains don't move. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know what we want to do. We want to circumvent that way. If you don't do it, you know, people want, look, it, if you don't want any presence to come through you and you get up and you touch the, the microphone, no wonder nothing is coming through you. You're, you're not a conduit. You're not a flow through. And you and we think we can just get up and shake and something comes out because we're eloquent or we're educated. And it's not. Wherever there's a transgression, there has to be a repercussion. We want God to bless us. And I want it too. I gotta go. We want God to bless us. But we do not understand. Do not fall victim to this world. Do not fall victim to the measure of what they're doing. Don't let them trick you. You can fall away. You can fall out. Let's let our hearts get connected to the right things that God will have for us. If we allow God to do that, if we allow him to line up the word of God, we allow him to make sure we are in the right place. Then God, God will, will do what he said he was going to do for us. I want you and I to understand that God wants to bless us. God really does want to bless us. God wants to give us everything that we need. God wants to be a blessing to us. But you just can't get it if you're going to disconnect from him. And so I'm saying to God, even with this song, Lord, I need more of you. I want more of you. You're all to me. You're exactly what I need. Your presence overwhelms me and it causes me to see. Look, I cannot live without you. And you really are my desire. I don't want to transgress. I don't want to fall away. There's a right way. And there's a wrong way for us to live this. Do not get caught up in the grace dispensation. Check your heart. 
and check the word of God. You hear me? I'm Stephen Williams. They call me the good bishop. And really ain't nobody good like our God. You can really fall away. I don't want you to do that. Just for filthy lucre. Just for having money in this world. Stuff you cannot take with you. You cannot take any of it with you. You can live a wonderful life while we're here on this earth. But if you're going to be uh, turning people away from the things of God, wide is the gate, narrow is the way that leads to life and peace. <laughs> we do not get an opportunity to do everything that we feel according to the word of God. Grace does cover it. But please understand, you can fall away. But that was never his plan. That was never his plan. According to Isaiah 42, as I close, as I close, Isaiah 42. And I want you to know, that's, what, that's the kind of God that we serve. Verse number five through nine, what he says, thus says the Lord, he hath created the heavens and stretched out his hand and spreads forth the earth. That which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and the spirit of them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and I will hold thy hand, and I will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out of the prisoners from the prison. And them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord. That in my name and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, the new things I do I declare. God wants you to be everything that you're supposed to be. Don't let this world make you get great on obedience to God. Study the word of God. And do what God would have you do. Y'all hear me? I love y'all so much. I hope you got something out of this lesson tonight. And I appreciate you. Until our next point in time, join us Sunday. I'll be preaching Sunday. I'll be preaching the word of God. Amen and amen. Appreciate y'all. Bye-bye.